What's up, dude? It's been a while, but I'm back. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Cursor. Cursor is a tool that has helped me basically speed up my development process by so much. I can't even tell you. Like, This video is going to try to show you how I do that. Um, actually, I've spread this, uh, this new series out in three videos. The first one is going to be covering the basics. Um, this one, this video. The next video is going to be talking about some advanced things you can do with Cursor. There are some really cool things that the Cursor team has done, which I want to show you. And then number three will be a full-on end-to-end guide of how I would build an app with Cursor. And that video is super cool because I've been doing this recently and I think you all should see this. And soon, before you know it, you'll be able to make a picture just like this. You see, this is me as a, as a little kid. And this is Cursor. You see, Cursor is hugging me. Curse is telling me it's all right, Neil. You're not going to be worried anymore. You're not going to be scared anymore of the devs that want you to do tickets because now I can do it with relative ease. Part one is going to cover four important concepts that you need to get started with Cursor. Okay, we're going to start off talking about tab, then command K, command L, and then command I. For the Windows users out there, it's going to be control L, control K, control I, whatever. Okay, and uh, yeah, you'll see this nice infographic that I... Uh, painstakingly made to show you your evolution as an AI engineer. Wow. All right, so let's get started. The tool we're going to be using here is Cursor. All right, you can find the download link at Cursor.com. What Cursor is, is an extension or a fork of VS Code. So that means it's literally VS Code, but the only thing that Cursor does is they add native AI features into VS Code. I already downloaded it, so you can go ahead and click download and do the whole onboarding process. It's really simple. I'm not going to show you how that's done. This is Warp. This is my terminal. If you haven't checked out Warp already, it's really cool. You should go ahead and download it. It's way better than the stock terminal that I use on my Mac. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a Next Next.js app. Okay. And we're going to do this in a folder called Cursor part one okay so we're gonna create it now this is where we just add simple options by the way please use TypeScript you can see here the first thing they, they're asking me is if I want to use TypeScript, TypeScript use TypeScript please don't be like a fool okay so now I'm just gonna say yes to all the default um, settings because the cursor team or sorry the next JS team is really cracked and they know what's best for me so I'm just gonna say yes okay at this point they're creating the repo for me so um, at this point, I usually drink a cup of coffee or I sing a song or whatever. But um, yeah, I'll check back with you as soon as this is done. Awesome. It's done now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run npm run dev. Okay. This is simple. This is straightforward for any React app. So it's starting off the server. And if I click on this link here, I'll be able to see the app this is the app running on localhost 3000 that's great so let's hop over the cursor to open this repo up okay so i basically clicked on open project and now i'm in the uh in the folder that hosts the new react app that we just created right so we're going to open that up and now here we have a beautiful a beautiful next.js project okay and so you can see this is literally vs code right this is cursor you can see cursor here see but this is literally Next.js and it's super, oh, sorry, um, VS Code. All my shortcuts are there. So if I want to go and find, like hit up my command palette, I can see that here. If I go to settings here, I'll see cursor settings and I'll even see VS Code settings. So, you know, there's cursor specific code, uh, sorry, cursor specific settings. And you also have VS Code settings, right? So if I go to cursor settings, this is where we'll be throwing around in part two. Okay. So part two has some really cracked features, which I want to explore, explore with you later. At the moment, it's not really important to know anything about Next.js. Um, I assume you have some basic understanding of how React works. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to remove all the bullshit code here. OK, so if I go back to um, if I go back to my thing, you see an empty an empty state here. All right. Uh, let's just remove all this. I created a dummy uh, list just with some uh, with some YouTubers and their and some arbitrary ad attributes. Like it doesn't really matter what what it is, but this is just some dummy data to work with. Okay, so what we can do now is we can say we can go down here, we can add a comment saying please create a type for the dummy data, please, bro. My job depends on it. All right, so I can just say this dummy data, and then now it's. Obviously, it's not um, complete, but you can see it kicking in. And now it's basically um, basically done for me, right? And now what I can do is I can go here and I can say as, well, I can say as dummy data, right? 
Yeah. And now it compiles. It's fine. It's, it doesn't do anything. Like it doesn't complain. So now this is this is one way of using tab. You can just write a comment of code, all right? And then it'll just do it for you, right? So now what I want to do is I'm going to import it. I'm going to import that data, that dummy data. If I check, it's called dummy, all right? If I do that and we forgot, yeah, we exported it. So we need to do this. Give me a second. Someone's calling me. No, we're going to ignore that. Okay, so uh, cool. So we have dummy here, okay? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce you to something cool called command K or for Windows users, control K. This is where I can literally get a prompt in my line, right? I can be like, bruh, look at dummy, dummy, loop through all of it and make it look pretty, please. I can just do that. And given the fact that it has context about this, it will now literally fill it up for me. And all I do basically is I drink some coffee while this shit does its job. And then I click on accept. Okay. Now, when I go back to my um, app, you can see here that it literally just did everything for me, right? Okay. But it goes one level deeper. Let's say that I actually gave a shit about um, the way it looked, right? I can literally just select it all, hit command K and be like, what do you think? Does this look pretty, dude? I can click on quick question and then wait for it. See, now it's capping. It's yapping and it's capping. All right, this is bullshit. I'd be like, nah, dude, it looks ugly F. Please make it look sleek. 2025 vibes, please. Use nice colors. TY, baby girl. Okay, click enter. Now we just wait, all right? Obviously in a real setting, you have your, your UI requirements, so you're gonna put in your real UI requirements right there, okay? So now it's uh, filling everything um, properly, right? We're using Tailwind, by the way, if you haven't caught on. Um, we're gonna do that and then we're gonna look here and see, here you go, literally, what did I do? I lit literally spoke to you while this was happening and it's so beautiful, right? Look at this gradient shit, that's crazy, right? Okay, so that, so, we've, so far we've covered uh, tab and we've covered uh, command K, right? Let's get into something more crazy. So we have another concept called chat, okay? So I can basically, what I can do is I can say command A, I can type in command L and suddenly a chat window pops up, okay? Again, for you, it will be control L if you're using Windows, okay? So what, what I'll, you can see these things called um, bills here, all right? These bills are basically references to the files of the code, like, to code files you want to have injected into it into its context all right so i'd be like dude is this pretty is this pretty and then it's a it, it'll yap or whatever it'll give its opinion but we know that ai doesn't have good opinions these days so we're gonna say nah i want you to make it look like apple okay however let's let's try to see what what, it, what else it can do however do you have any idea of what we can do to make this page a bit more useful? All right, we'll see what, what we can do. And while this loads, I'll show you what else you can do. You can basically change the languages or like the models that um, that you you can use. So you can use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. This is my favorite. This is like, it never it basically never fails. It's great. Um, you have all the other models as uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, Mr. or whatever. As they drop more and more models, you'll see this list grow, and it's pretty cool. Uh, you can see here that they gave some um, some suggestions, right? To like like a code, uh, a code diff, basically. Well, what you could do is you could just literally click on apply, and it will literally apply it, apply the code properly to where it's supposed to apply. So you see, it didn't touch this shit, right? It, it, you don't see any import codes here, right? Or like um, import statements here. So it left. It left all that shit alone and it just injected the code where it's supposed to go. Sometimes it fails, but some, but most majority of time it doesn't. Okay. So we can reject the file here. Or we can accept the file. I can even inline edit it if I want to. So I can remove this, this, you know, this, this thing here. And I can just click on accept file. Okay. So now uh, it's, it is complaining. So let's see. Total videos doesn't. Okay. So great. Great. Okay. Um, what I can do is I can literally take these errors here. 
and I can say fix in chat. Okay, so it'll go down here and it'll literally do it for me. Okay, so um, what we can do here is, okay, so it says this makes the those attributes optional. So we can just click on apply and you see how it switched to dummy.ts and it just added those attributes right there. That's, that's what's so powerful about this. It knows exactly what your files are, where they are, what they do. So we can click on accept. Cool. And so now you can see that the page is not um, completing anymore. So let's check it out. What does it look like? Okay, it looks like that. So now, oh, apparently it added sorting. That's sick. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. But if I do fire ship, that doesn't work as well. So perfect. Now I'll go back and say, bruh, your shit, your shit is broke. It doesn't even work. And because we're nice guys, we'll tell them what ex exactly doesn't work. Sorting and search. Okay. Boom. Let's see what it, what it does. So it sees, you can see here that it didn't actually make it functional earlier, but now it did. So great. We're going to just click on apply here. Click on accept. It's not complaining. So let's see. Does it work? Boom. Okay, so there's some um, there's some Next.js thing you need to put use client on things that need state. So let's just do that and boom. All right, we have our stuff here. If I do fire, wow, you see it works. It works. See, and this is how long did it take me? It took me it took me a few minutes, and that's super cool. That's really nice, and it's super powerful in my opinion. All right, so that is command I. Let's get on to something a bit more cool in my opinion so we have something called a composer in cursor all right so we're gonna go on page right that's where we were okay um, we're gonna select everything and we're gonna hit command I command I will open something called composer you'll see that command L opens something called chat and command I open something called cursor oh sorry composer now the difference between chat and composer is that chat will just suggest you a few things and you can decide yourself if you want to um, accept it or not. Composer, on the other hand, that's different. That will actually start editing your files, all your files, if you want, which is super interesting. I'll show you. So we have a page here and it's, a, it's, it's getting, you know, a little long here. Um, so what we can do is, yo, bro, you good fam? Gee, I want to make this I want to pimp this page out. Hello. Hello all the way. Okay. Um, please add some more functionality here. Okay. Add some more functionality here and add a button to switch from list view to grid view. View and vice versa. Please return the data as a table in the list view, right? I can go as deep as I want. Now, what's really cracked is if you go on chat GPT and you give it more context about your project, you actually make requirements and then you put the requirements in this chat prompt right here. Then it's like, all right, all right, they'd have so much context, it can do pretty much anything you want, which is super cool. So, all right, let's do this right here. You can see it's it's, it's busy, okay? Um, I can still go around all my files and shit like that. I wouldn't touch the files, especially if it's currently busy with it, you know, just to avoid like um, race conditions and shit like that. But yeah, you got it here. It's doing its shit. It's done. Oh, it's still going. Okay, that's great. Um, Cool. It looks like it's done. I can hit it with the accept all. All right. And then when I save here, let's see if it worked. Okay. All right. Let's click list view. Okay. So uh, you might be wondering why is it... Um, why is it like light out? It's it's because we had a dark uh, a dark mode theme with Next.js and now we're using light mode, so it's pretty like it's confused. It doesn't know what to do, but the the text is still there, right? So you can see here it's working pretty much fine, and we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to click apply, not even once. And see, this is how it worked. Okay, um, yeah, that's like a pretty much a quick demo. You had a to so to recap, we had. We had tab that would suggest you inline things, especially if you gave it context. You had command K that could open up a prompt in line and you could just quickly edit a function or a line of code or whatever. And then you had command L, which was basically a chat um, a chat option where you could chat and ask for, ask for suggestions, etc. And then you also had command I, which was a composer. Okay, so that was pretty cool. 
um, we see here the evolution of how you can actually like let go of your own coding um, coding grunt work and let cursor do the job that you want it to do. One important thing that I did not mention though was something called tagging. You can use at the at symbol to tag different files within your code base. So, uh, so far we have, um, we have docs, which is pretty cool. You can see, you can look at all these um, docs that they already have pre-built here. Um, you can also add new docs. You can uh, link to a doc, external doc, and it can literally consult the doc and add it into the context, which is super cool. Cause like LLMs, they're not necessarily like up to date with the latest version of the doc. You also have referencing files and shit. Okay, and I'll show you. So this is like the layout of TSX. If you don't know Next.js, don't worry. It's just basically like the layout component of, like the parent component of your app, okay? Uh, where you where you specify the bodies, the meta tags, etc. okay? So you can see this is like the default um, meta tag, right? So what I can do is I can so control A, I can say control K or command K, right? I can go to page.tsx. You can see here, it gives you the drop down. You can see everything, right? Um, I can say go to page.tsx. You can see it, it, it loads in the code here in context. All right. Um, and dummy, do you get that? That, like I'm building a new app to show, to show and compare users. Please make the SEO matching. Okay. And I give them the data I'm working with, right? I press enter and then we wait. So it's, it's getting the context out of the other files because I told it to get it, the context out of the other files and now it did it for me, right? So that's um, that's basically a sneak peek, honestly, for part two because in part two, we're gonna be using a lot with at, uh, with, with the daggers and stuff like that and um, trying to inject a bunch of content into the, the context window. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm really excited to show you what I've done with Cursor so far. Like um, small things include, I created my portfolio um, with cursor and like, yeah, this is just my display. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. It was super quick to do. Um, I didn't use any templates. I just really sparred with cursor every day to, to get this done. And eventually like in the span of one or two days, like I was able to put a bunch of the scaffolding up and I was really happy about that. And I hope that you'll be, you'll be able to, um, to do this as well. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, and if you are a real fan, you know what I'm going to say next. Life is a gift given by the gods to make a proper use of it. I'll check in the next video. Thank you so much, so much, so much for uh, sticking with me. You're the best. I love you. Take care. Bye.